Okay, hopefully everybody can uh, can see that screen now. Is that is that okay? Okay, I'm uh, I'm assuming that you can uh, you can see that screen okay and that you can uh, hear me. Uh, so thanks very much for the uh, introduction. Um, so my name is Adam Kite. I'm a lecturer in mechanical and marine engineering design. Um, just a little bit, tiny bit of background about me. Uh, I came to Plymouth University about 10 years ago, uh, straight from industry. So I previously worked as a as an engineering consultant and also for various uh, different companies, such as the Royal National Lifeboat Institution, our OK, um, a, a UK uh, life-saving institution that, that operate lifeboats. So I was responsible for uh, designing uh, equipment like the like you see on the top right there. Uh, my main research interests now are in medical engineering, uh, so I'm interested in simulating fluid flow through arteries in uh, reconstructive surgery applications and understanding how the, the artery walls uh, behave, the structure of the artery walls behave as, the, as blood pressure changes and uh, flow pulses go through those, through the, through those arteries. <clears throat> Um, so I'm here to talk uh, about uh, mechanical and marine engineering. Um, so we have two main um, BNG, uh, MNG programs, so either a three-year BNG uh, or a four-year MNG program. Um, so that's mechanical engineering uh, and marine technology. Uh, and we also have the option within both of those programs to, to do a, a with composites pathway, uh, which takes into account uh, our expertise in composite materials uh, in both of these particular fields. Uh, we also have uh, two MSc programmes within our subject group, that's Advanced Engineering Design uh, and also Autonomous Systems. Uh, and we're looking to uh, introduce uh, at least another one fairly soon in, in medical engineering applications. Um, so these are things that we're, uh, we're also very proud of. Um, so that kind of leads me on to some of the special expert uh, specialist areas of expertise that we have uh, within our subject group so i've already mentioned several times composites uh, we have uh, some world leading uh, academic staff uh, in the area of composites uh, looking at using composites which uh, as you may well know are some of the highest performing uh, high tech lightweight materials uh, available to engineers these days uh, and we have really good links with the composites industry. So many of our students uh, go on to work within the composites engine, uh, within the composites industry. Uh, these employers really like our kind of practic the practical skills that our graduates come away with, um, making them really useful from day one in their, uh, in their future composites careers. Uh, as you've seen already, uh, quite a lot of focus uh, on uh, marine, uh, as, as, as you'll already have seen, we are world leaders in marine research in all sorts of different fields. So ranging from marine renewable energy, um, all sorts of different uh, uh, devices for harvesting renewable energy in the marine environment. Uh, but also we've got uh, expertise in more traditional marine areas. So um, uh, yacht design, uh, ship design, all that kind of thing, one of our lecturers. Uh, has worked on uh, many of the America's Cup uh, teams in the past. Um, advanced Engineering Design, as I say, we have an MSc in this, but it's also a focus throughout uh, our degree programmes. So we make sure that our students are extremely employable uh, by ensuring that they have experience with the latest engineering software uh, and methods that uh, engineering uh, design engineers uh, now and also in the future uh, have to be expert in. And finally, autonomous systems. Uh, and as we've already seen, there's kind of a common theme throughout the, uh, the various subject groups that, that are talking to you today um, uh, in terms of uh, autonomous systems. Uh, in particular, we've got examples here of marine autonomous systems. Uh, and we really encourage our students to have hands-on projects uh, in all sorts of different applications in this particular area. Um, some of our facilities, again, I've kind of touched on some of this already, um, but uh, the, the thing that's really important to, to mention within our university is we don't specifically have research equipment uh, in, in, our, in, our, in our subject group. We don't have research equipment. We don't have uh, undergraduate teaching equipment. If an undergraduate student has a reason to use some of our 
uh, most prestigious kind of pieces of equipment, uh, then we are very, very keen uh, to ensure that they get the chance to use it. it. It isn't just kind of hidden away for our researchers to use, it's for everybody to use. Um, so our high performance computing facilities uh, are very impressive uh, and some of our students on mechanical engineering degree use this sort of thing for engineering simulation of uh, fluid flows or um, structural behavior of materials and all that kind of thing. Um, uh, you've already seen mentioned uh, in some of the other talks the marine renewables so uh, wave tanks and flumes in fact not just for marine renewables for all sorts of marine applications and again we've got some really good examples of undergraduate projects uh, where students have, uh, have used these facilities. Um, uh, Advanced Composites Manufacturing uh, Laboratory uh, has done lots of uh, commercial consultancy work uh, as well as research and of course lots and lots of undergraduate teaching uh, and this is where our, our students, well I was going to say where our students get our hands dirty but they, uh, they're, they're generally wearing gloves so they don't actually get their hands dirty but they do get lots and lots of uh, practical experience uh, in uh, composites manufacturing. Uh, we have some excellent uh, facilities uh, in terms of uh, our electron microscopes uh, and, and microscopes in general. Um, some real expertise in that field, so supporting our students in their materials education and research. Uh, excellent CNC manufacturing facilities. You can see a CNC controlled water jet cutter here. Um, uh, and finally, uh, a, a reasonably new addition is, is our digital fabrication uh, laboratory, looking at all sorts of things like additive manufacturing, um, so it's rapid uh, prototyping, uh, 3D scanning, all that kind of thing. Um, I, sh I should at this point actually mention that a lot of these uh, slides weren't put together by myself. Um, I prepared this uh, presentation or parts of it um, a few years ago while I was on uh, a field trip uh, with a, a bunch of students uh, and I asked the students what it was that they thought was special about our university and I, they actually put a lot of these slides together for me. Um, so here are some of the things that they said. They really like the fact that we've got a good balance within our timetable. Um, so we've got a good mix of lecture sessions, tutorial and practical work uh, and independent study where the students go off and apply uh, what they've learnt in their modules. Uh, we have a really supportive learning environment, okay, so library that they can access all the time, um, lots of open access computer labs that they can access either on campus uh, or remotely. Uh, and as I said before, our students are actively encouraged to use our workshops and laboratories, okay, we, we, we feel very strongly that that's the reason that this equipment is there. Uh, and above all, we ensure, and this is particularly important for our international students, um, that our staff are very friendly, very approachable. We have an, an open door policy. Uh, if a student has a, has a problem with something, they can actually come and either physically knock on our door or we can have, a, if, a, if it's remote access, we can have a, a Zoom session with that student um, and uh, help them out with uh, whatever it is that's concerning them, whether that's kind of a, an academic uh, problem or otherwise, we are very much there to, to help and support them. Uh, we make sure we uh, limit our class sizes to fairly moderate class sizes and even this is um, and hopefully you'll see not just from myself but from all the people that are, that are presenting today that our lecturers are genuinely enthusiastic and, and motivated in in their particular subject areas. Um, one of the things as again as some of the, the other presenters have, have mentioned is we're very concerned in fact our primary concern is getting the student the absolute dream job when they graduate um, and one of the ways that we do that is we put a lot of effort in, into helping them maximize the impact of their um, CV so we have a CV and career support service um, we try and ensure that they actually get accredited skills in the software that they're going to be using in industry so from day one that they're competent sitting down in front of a, a computer and using that in anger on uh, real engineering projects and we give them lots of uh, experience in special projects and uh, competitions uh, and the like uh, so those are all things to kind of add to their cv to help them compete against the, the hundreds of other graduates that are going to be quite likely applying for the same uh, for the same jobs as them uh, one of the things that really enhances a lot of our students' CVs is their, their placements and we very strongly encourage our students to, to go out on placement uh, wherever they can. 
Um, these are just a few examples of the, the hundreds and hundreds of placements that our mechanical and marine students have done um, over the years. Um, some, some pretty big names, so uh, several Formula One teams uh, our students have been to, uh, aerospace companies, uh, oil and gas, um, marine, uh, all sorts really, um, and uh, the, the list just grows and grows. Um, and whenever I get the chance, I, I always very strongly encourage our students, if, if possible at all, to go out onto placement. Um, it really does change them, not just in terms of their, their engineering skills, although it, it does really um, enhance their engineering skills, but just in their, their personal development, their kind of uh, management skills, their ability to work in with, with a team, uh, their ability to communicate at all different levels. All of those things are, are quite difficult to teach in an academic environment, but uh, incredibly enhanced in a placement. And I always find a student that goes out on placement at the end of their second year comes back a pretty changed person um, by the time they, uh, they, they, they go into their uh, stage four. Uh, the other thing that really shapes our students and makes them extremely employable is the range of dissertations. So this is uh, the thing that they do in their, their third year of study or, in, or their fourth year if they've been out on placement. Um, and I just thought it'd be interesting to show you a few of the, uh, the, 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 the different kind of range of dissertations that some of our, our students get involved in. Um, so uh, Maria, um, excellent student. Uh, she was very interested in a, a biomedical application here. So looking at how um, uh, artificial knee replacements um, are affected by different sports. And she looked at skiing, tennis and golf uh, and developed a, a structural finite elements analysis uh, model of the way that that uh, knee behaves under all the loads that she calculated on those three different sports. And actually, surprisingly, she found out that um, on the knee joint itself, um, it's actually golf that is one of the most demanding applications. And once you cannot kind of understand those, uh, the, the way that type of uh, mechanism behaves and the loads on that mechanism, then that's the sort of uh, information that can you, be used to help improve the performance of it and prolong the, uh, prolong the, the, the life of a, an artificial, um, artificial knee. Uh, another completely different application, um, this was one of the uh, dissertations that I supervised, so uh, William Fuller uh, developed a, a computational fluid dynamics uh, model of a, a mar marine mammal, um, so it's computational fluid mechanics is actually a, a very challenging area of, of engineering that requires pretty huge computing resources and it's all about simulating the way fluid flows over a, a particular object and how a, a structural object interacts with with a fluid flow such as an airflow or a water flow so hydrodynamics or aerodynamics um, uh, and it's difficult enough to get that right for a, an object that just doesn't change its shape um, but for a, a, an object such as an animal that's constantly reacting to its surroundings and changing its body shape that becomes even more difficult um, and the type of work that William Fuller did uh, is really um, linked to some of the research that we're doing actually uh, in, our, in our subject group which is looking at the impact on animals of these data data logging devices um, which are often used to gather information either about animal behavior or possibly even uh, climate change etc um, and uh, that if we can simulate uh, the behavior of a particular or s simulate the fluid flow over an animal then we can understand the impact of adding a, a, a data logging device to that animal's body. Um, another one here Jake Cronk was interested in turbochargers so he, he uh, did a placement uh, at the Mercedes Formula One team uh, and then did a dissertation looking at uh, adding inlet guide guide vanes to a, a compressor such as a compressor within a turbocharger uh, and experimentally and then theoretically validating um, his uh, performance improvements due to the shape of these particular guide vanes and on the strength of all that uh, Jake uh, was then uh, given a permanent job uh, with the Mercedes Formula One team so just one of quite a few students uh, in uh, mechanical and marine engineering that have gone on to to Formula One afterwards. Um, uh, often we find that some of our international students are among our top students. Um, 
So just a few examples here. Uh, so uh, uh, Don Q Han from South Korea um, did an excellent dissertation. Uh, now, uh, uh, in, in fact, it was uh, judged as the, the best dissertation in his particular year of study by the IMA Key. Uh, he's now working as an aeronautical engineer for Korea Aerospace Industries. Um, uh, uh, Ariane uh, from uh, Iran, uh, we're particularly proud of because he uh, obviously he got a first class honours degree, but he got that having started off in our foundation year, so came right the way through our, our system from foundation level uh, and did an excellent project on uh, uh, optimising water consumption in, in irrigation. Uh, Zin at the bottom from uh, Malaysia uh, worked with me uh, on my um, research interest that I mentioned earlier on, uh, doing an incredibly difficult project, uh, modelling the, the behaviour of a carotid artery as the uh, pressure and flow rates change within the carotid artery and looking at the way that artery changes its shape. Um, so that's dissertations. The other thing that we strongly encourage our students to do uh, is uh, get involved in group design projects. Okay, so some of these uh, projects, just, just two examples of things that our students have been in, involved in uh, over recent years. So on the left, we had a human powered submarine that our students completely designed and built and raced themselves. Now this seems like a utterly crazy idea uh, and it is absolutely terrifying. So this, this human inside the submarine is breathing using scuba gear. Uh, and we've been to competitions both in the UK uh, and the US uh, and done it in particular in the in the UK one did extremely well in that competition coming uh, third place on the first time we'd ever entered this competition uh, and on the right hand side again uh, our students designed uh, and built uh, this world record breaking hand cycle and um, so that the hand cycle is a, is a bike uh, that's used by a disabled athlete powered by their arms rather than their legs uh, and we went out, we, in fact, we've been out to Nevada twice to the World Human Powered Speed Championships, uh, and we got a, a world record um, uh, with our hand cycle uh, the last time we went out to Nevada with, uh, with this vehicle. Um, one thing I'd like to say is, obviously, those, those uh, are just a couple of examples of projects that students uh, get themselves involved with within our university and the reason we do that sort of thing is so that they get active experience uh, in applying all the different subject areas that we teach in in mechanical uh, and marine uh, engineering. Now I don't have time to talk about all these but just a, a few examples so fluid mechanics for example um, our students get involved in wind tunnel testing in um, uh, simulation work, computational fluid dynamics to work out the aerodynamics and also in the fund of fundamental maths kind of governing the way an aerodynamic, a streamlined object behaves. So that's a, a direct application um, of this sort of theory. Uh, I could talk about the same sort of thing in structures. So here we've got a, a finite element model of the, uh, of the frame of that hand cycle that you saw on an earlier slide, uh, but also some mechanical testing uh, and some theory going into working out how strong and stiff uh, that structure needs to be whilst making it as light as absolutely possible. Uh, on the marine side, again, I could talk about any of these things, but um, in our human powered submarine, uh, we, uh, we can't just buy an off the shelf propeller for a human powered submarine because it's so different to any other, material, uh, any, any other marine vehicle. Um, so our students had to design the propeller system for that from scratch using all sorts of propeller theory uh, and then uh, build this actually very complicated variable pitch uh, counter rotating submarine propeller. Um, mathematics basically underpins pretty much everything that a mechanical or marine engineer does. Um, so we place a, a strong focus uh, on that mathematics. Um, it feeds into all of those different subjects. Uh, and students often come into our um, degree programs rather scared of maths uh, and come out of it seeing the, the real power that uh, mathematics has uh, as, a, as, a, as a skill within an engineer's toolbox uh, and really understand the, uh, what they can do with mathematical knowledge. And finally, my um, particular um, sort of subject specialization or the thing that I'm most interested in is engineering design, which is kind of putting all these building blocks together uh, and using them in a practical sense. So 
for the for the submarine or the hand cycle here we can see that a lot of it involves not just engineering knowledge but real creativity and ability to to communicate uh, and we think these are essential skills for our, for our um, undergraduate engineers and once they've come up with some creative ideas we then help them develop the skills um, to to take these forward into to fully functioning designs so this image on the on the right hand side is is um, the inside of our uh, human powered hand cycle uh, that was before a single piece of equipment was actually manufactured that's an entirely computer generated uh, image so we fully understood uh, exactly how it all fitted together and how much it was going to weigh and how much the, how much stress all, all the components were going to be under before we started uh, manufacturing the thing we also teach them how to manage engineering projects so uh, managing their time managing their budgets managing risks are all essential parts of uh, being a, a competent engineer in today's world. Uh, now, obviously, we're not just teaching them how to design human powered submarines and uh, hand cycles and the like. Uh, we feel that these are real essential skills for a mechanical or a marine engineer um, as they go forward. So the challenges that we, we face in our world today in things like uh, the, the transport of the future or the energy generation of the future are the things that we are really equipping our our graduates to to go out and uh, and tackle from day one. Uh, so that's uh, that's my presentation. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Uh, if anybody's got any questions, I'd be uh, really happy to to try and answer them for you.